So review what we did on Wednesday. Do you guys have any questions? Like on the first part, right? Doing the change of base formula, was that pretty straightforward? Mm -hmm. Okay, and even if it's like, you know, you just want to just double check to see if you got the right answer. We can do that too. Just gotta let me know. Um, e, can you just E? Yeah, E. Okay, so remember you're using the change of base formula here. Remember, change of base formula says that you have log base B of A. And since we are doing this in our calculator, because we want to write this um, correct to three significant figures, that means we're going to be using the law that's in our calculator, also known as the what? Ln. No, not the ln. What's log of 10. Oh, log of 10? Yeah, what is that called? And what's its name? Logarithm. It's called a blank logarithm. If it has a base of 10, it is a? Natural. Not natural. It's a what logarithm? Oh, it's a, oh, okay. I thought you said it's a. We're blank. playing hangman for this? Yes. Um, common? There you go. It's a common logarithm. Okay. As a base of 10, those are called your common logarithms. So that means A here is going to be 7 to the seventh power all over log base 10, which I really don't even have to write that, over 3. So then you just tap that into your calculator. Log 7 to the seventh power, close it off, divided by log of 3. Okay. So when we do that, Real quick. Log seven to the seventh power. Why is it log seven to the seventh power? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Never mind. Okay. So it'll be twelve point four, correct three significant figures. Okay? So remember, this whole part, this was your A and then this was your B. Yeah? All right. Uh, let's look, uh, let's keep going forward. Okay. Oops. Uh, you're given that log base three of X is equal to Y express log base nine of X in terms of Y or three or four. Do I have any questions on those? Let's take a look at your work and see if you have questions. Yeah, okay. Question on four. Okay, on four. It's a show problem. So remember, it's about the work that goes along with it. Okay, since you're trying to show that this is equal to 2x, your goal is to get to 2x. All right, so I'm going to take this part and I'm going to show using the power law of logarithms that I can take that x and bring it to the exponent of that 2. Okay, remember your laws of logarithms, we talked about that on Monday of last week. Um, they also apply to your natural logarithms as well, all your logs. And so now that you've done that, remember E raised to the LN cancels out and you're just left with two to the X. That makes so much more sense. Mm -hmm. Huh, that definitely makes more sense now. All right, yeah, so, so all of these, They also apply for natural logs as well, okay? So all of those, this becomes ln of x times y, and then the power one, and I'm just using kind of random variables right now, but power also works for lns as well. Can you do two? Mm -hmm. I can say it's pretty good. All right. So number two, you have these change of base. Because as you can see, I'm trying to go from a law of base three to like a law of base nine. I can't do that. Especially I'm trying to write it in terms of y. So your goal is to basically change the base of this so that you can write it in terms of y. So I'm going to use the change of base formula, which was earlier. I had to delete it since I'm annotating over this. I want to change my base so that it has a base of three. This is why you can do the change of base formula with these types of problems. I'm going to change it to a base of three. Then I'm going to have my a value on the, in the numerator, then I'll have a log base 3 of 9. That is a 9. Okay. Now, as we can see, log base 3 of x is equal to y, so I can substitute that in here for y. And lastly, I need to evaluate log base 3 of 9. 
Remember, to evaluate, I need to rewrite this in exponential. So that's going to be 3 to the x power is equal to 9. So what does x equal? 2. So log base 3 of 9 is actually equal to 2. And that's exactly what log base 9 of x is equal to. Do you mind if we don't use the change of place for that one? How, how else would you do it? Well, I got the same answer, but the way I did it was when it's the log 3x equals y, I changed that to exponential form mm -hmm. originally. And then I knew that we would have to get a, a base of 9 for the thing. So I basically was like 3y is equal to 9 to the power of something y. So that's how I got one half. And then I like changed it again. Ooh, okay. So that, you, you have to be careful about doing it that way. Like when you increase the base in an exponential problem to solve, sometimes that won't always work to get your solution. Okay? okay. So be very careful if you decide to increase your base so then that way the bases can be equal. Okay? You gotta be careful about that. Sometimes Works. So just do change of base? A ch change of base will, will, will get it every time. Okay. But I have seen some problems where like students try like in, in the solving the exponential equations where they try to increase the base versus decreasing the base and then they run into a few issues. So just be careful. Any other ones on this? Number three? In number three, we're asked to, uh, we're given this, we have to write it in the form of y equals p a plus q, where p and q are integers. So the only way that I can rewrite this so that it now has additions in it, I'm going to have to expand using our laws of logarithms. Okay? This is what that additional video, I think I posted, I was like, I want you guys to watch some additional video, take some notes. That's where this comes into play. Division means what when I, when I expand it? It means subtraction. That's the only other law of log proofs that I don't have here. Here's one law. Here's another one. The last one is the division one. Okay. So subtraction means division. So this turns into log base 3 27 to the a power minus log base 3 of 81. Okay? Now remember, when you have an exponent, you can continue to expand this by bringing it to the coefficient in front of the log. So you can go, like they're interchangeable, you can go both ways. So if it's in this condensed form, which it is right now, you can expand it by moving that exponent to the front. Okay. So we took it from the condensed form, which was this, and then we took it to the expanded by bringing the exponent to the front. Oh, okay. So now, again, we evaluate. What's law base 3 of 27? We just did it. It's 3, so this turns to a 3a. And then what's law base 3 of 81? It's 4. So now, there's your expression in the form of a, uh, pa plus q. It's not a plus, but I mean, so an entry. Okay. Let's look at 5. Okay. If you watch that video, that extra video that I posted, you guys should be able to do these pretty well. If you watched it, if you didn't, then yes, I understand if you might have struggled on this one. Any questions on five? Well, just real quick, let's do this one. This one looks a little bit more involved. You will want to, again, continue to expand this by taking the division to a subtraction, taking any exponents and bringing them to the front of your log. So remember, the square root of a is the same thing as saying what? 
So that's a to the one half. So that's technically another epsilon that can be brought to the front. And now that it's fully expanded, I can replace log base two of a with p and log base two of b with q. So my final answer would be two q minus one half a. Wouldn't that be p? Um, yep. The a would be p. Yep. And look at your question. Um, when you multiply two logs, what happens? What happens? Like you mean like log base four of x times log base four of x? Um, no, different, different base. Different bases? Yeah. You shouldn't you shouldn't be multiplying two logs with different bases. Okay, and what if it was the yeah same base? If it's the same base, then this just turns into log base four of x squared. Because I was thinking like since addition is multi multiplication, then multiplication is addition. Yeah, but it's but in that sense, it would be something like um like it would have to be split up mm -hmm. in order for this to turn into addition. Like this turns into log base four of x plus log base four of y. But not but when you have two logs that are being multiplied together, no, you're actually multiplying their arguments. Mm -hmm. So these are just expanding? These you were expanding them so that way you can replace anytime you saw log base two of A with a P and log base two of B with a P. Because any other form, like it, it has to be literally that expression in order for you to replace it. It, it can't be any variation. Like um, like here in D, yes, you could rewrite this as B to the one half, but that doesn't mean that this would turn into Q to the one half. The reason why is because this is technically being raised, this B is being raised to the one half. But if you bring it to the front of the log, now it's one half times the log base two of B. And now you can replace it to say this is one half Q. And that's correct. So the only way that you can actually substitute variables in for logarithmic expressions is by expanding. Okay, let's look at the back side. All right. Um, this one. Any questions on six or seven? Um, I, I just, um, when I was doing this, I couldn't remember like the properties of the original function, like the domain. Mm -hmm. Well, remember your, your most basic logarithmic function. I mean, this was a common law. So this is the one that we, that, you know, you guys learned about that you graphed. Remember that's a, Vertical asymptote at x equals zero has an x-intercept at one zero. And so essentially you were taking that point in your vertical asymptote. So then that way you could graph, sketch the graph of this. What did the minus mean? I'm talking to anyone. Like oh. transformation wise, what does that minus on the outside mean? Um, no. Why? Reflection. I'm reflecting it over the y. And then the two means? Um, Vertical stretch by a factor of two. And then the minus one? To the right one. So you had to flip this over the y-axis. You had to vertically stretch it by two, which affects your um, y values. So it'd be a little bit skinnier, and then you had to move it to the right. So you, this graph, when you flip it over and move it to the right, now you have a vertical asymptote at x equals one. Your um, x-intercept that when you flip it would have turned into negative one zero. Now it gets moved to the right, so now it's at zero zero, and then it's stretched a little bit more. So that's what the, your sketch should look like. Um, how would it look like um, if not the actual graph, but like the equation, if it was a result of the exact same. 
if it was a, a reflection over the x-axis, then it would look like like that on the inside. And um, up and down. Up and down, there would be something on the outside of that parenthesis. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so the same type of transformation we've been dealing with since functions, that we applied to quadratics, that we applied to exponentials, also apply to logs here as well. Any questions on seven? Uh, I have a question on six. Okay. So we actually do have this exact same problem that we did in our notes. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, my notes, uh, graph does not match the graph that you just showed. Like okay. the way that we did it in class seemed different, but it's the exact same problem. All right, sorry, let me make that cor uh, correction. That is a reflection not over the x-axis, but that's a re uh, reflection over the y-axis. I'm sorry, not over the y-axis, but it's actually a reflection over the x-axis because I'm making my y's negative. And so to do that, we want to reflect it over our x-axis, so it's going to be upside down. So then when we do that, it turns into this for the reflection part. So this is negative log of x, okay? When it's on the inside, then it's a reflection over your y-axis. So sorry, let me make that correction there, but I'm still stretching it vertically. I am still moving it to the right one, so then my Vertical asymptote, was, vertical asymptote would still be at x equals 1, but my x-intercept would now be at 2, 0, not 1, 0. So I have no mistake there. Seven? All right, what about on the rest of the page? Eight and nine. Okay. Uh, eight, very similar to the problems we used to do with quadratics when we were looking for like the value of a or the value of a coefficient. Remember, we can always find any missing values as long as we know a point that's on the graph. Now, specifically, we probably want to use that 27 degree point because one zero is common in a lot of logarithms. We're trying to find one that's specific that actually will go through 27, 3. So we will want to plug in 3 for y and then 27 for x. So then that way we can find the value of a. So a three. So a to the third equals 27. So then yes, a would be 3. So remember, a lot of logarithmic functions, especially when there's no stretching, no moving left or right, no vertical shifting up or down, will have an x-intercept at one zero. So you don't want to use one zero to actually figure out what this point is. You want to use another point on the graph to find the value of a. Just like you would if you were trying to find the vertical stretch of a quadratic, but you knew the vertex, okay? Same thing. The last two? Are we good on these? Nine. Nine. Nine? Okay. Well, remember, uh, exponential functions, uh, given that you were, uh, you were given this information, and it was saying for only the x values that are in between negative 2 and positive 4, when it asks you to state the domain and range of the, what does that mean? The inverse. Okay, remember, inverses, everything switches. The x becomes the y, the y becomes the x, the domain becomes the range, the range becomes the domain. So when you were given this information right here, you were actually given the range of your inverse because that's the domain on the original function. So the range of your inverse should have been from negative 2 to positive 4. Or you could have wrote that in 
interval notation, either one really doesn't matter. But that's the main thing with inverses. Domain becomes the range, range becomes the domain, your x's and your y's switch. So if these are your respective x's on your exponential function. How do I find my y's on that exponential function? What would I need to do to find the y's on this exponential function? Plug in a value for x. Plug in a value for x. And since I know that the domain only goes from negative 2 to positive 4, then I need the, the y values that are associated with only being at negative 2 to positive 4. So I want to plug in negative 2 for x to find my y's and then plug in positive 4 for x to find the y's. Because then I'll find my range of my original function, which will give me the domain of my inverse. What is 0.25 times negative 2? Or what's 1 fourth times negative 2? Negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. And then what's 1 fourth times 4? 1. E to the first is just E. So my range goes from e to the negative one half to e. So then that means the domain of my function, sorry, of my inverse would be exactly that. You can put e's and logarithm and all that in your domain and ranges? Yes, because remember e is what? What is E? It is a number. It's an irrational number, but still a number nonetheless. And considering that the only part of this homework was that was calculated was number one, you will want to leave your expressions in terms of E. No, that literally means like domain becomes the range, range becomes the domain. Mm -hmm. The x's and the y's flip, not like the, they're placing them. So again, for inverses, this is the domain of the original. This is the range of the original. So then this is the domain of the inverse. Range of the so the exponential thing is the inverse of the law, right? Exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other, yes. So essentially what we just found was we found the domain and the range of the corresponding logarithmic function for E. Okay. So for this one, remember this symbol means composite. I have to plug F into G. Okay, remember that E raised to the LN cancels out. So I'm left with 2 times x minus 1. So then it's just 2x minus 2. That'll be your answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.